Marielle Franco was a rising political star in Brazil. She was an activist, the only black woman to serve on Rio de Janeiro's current city council, and a fierce critic of government corruption. She was known for her infectious smile, colorful head wraps, and strong advocacy for poor black people. She was a symbol of hope to many marginalized communities in Brazil who have felt left out of politics for decades. And on March 14th, the 38-year-old Franco was tragically assassinated. Hey guys, I'm Versha, and today we're taking a closer look at the life, career, and early death of Rio Councilwoman Marielle Franco. Franco, who was born Marielle Francisco da Silva, was from humble beginnings. She was born in 1979 in Mare, a favela in northern Rio, surrounded by two very powerful gangs and a paramilitary group. Mare ranks as one of the worst slums in Rio in terms of life expectancy, education, and per capita income, so Franco would have to defy the odds in order to make it out. She started working at age 11 in order to help her parents pay for her school. Franco's sister, Agnelli Silva, recalled that they grew up constantly witnessing violence. They sometimes missed school due to shootouts, and at other times had to walk past bodies laying in the street, she said in an interview. It was these types of experiences that shaped Franco's ambitions to make it out of the favela and her passions for human rights. At 19 years old, Franco became a single mother, giving birth to her only daughter, but she also continued working toward her goals. She enrolled in a free college prep course at the Mare Center for Studies and Solidarity Action, which aimed to teach young people from the favelas how they could improve their neighborhoods. This led her to one of Brazil's elite universities, the Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro, which she attended on a scholarship. Even though 54.9% of Brazil's population consider themselves black or mixed race, Franco was one of the only two black students at the university during this period. While there, Franco balanced being a mother and working as a preschool teacher who was making minimum wage. It was around this time that one of her best friends was killed by a stray bullet during a shootout between a local gang and police forces. That's when her focus shifted, and she was inspired to become a human rights activist. Franco went on to earn her degree in social sciences, but now she had a new directive. Now driven to effect change, Franco started working for more human rights and civil society organizations in Brazil. She became one of the most notable members of Brazil's new left-wing party, the Party of Socialism and Liberty. During this time, Franco earned her master's degree while also taking up a leadership role in the Human Rights Commission of Rio's Legislative Assembly. Here, she worked alongside Marcelo Freixo, who was someone who also spoke out against the involvement of police and militias and paramilitary groups in Rio. Franco's rise in politics coincided with Rio's rise in violence. A big part of her popularity was due to her approach to this issue, publicly speaking out against what she saw as the corrupt factors and inequality that contributed to the violence. In 2016, after 10 years of working in the Human Rights Commission, Franco felt that she could have a greater impact in public office. So she ran for a seat on the Rio de Janeiro City Council. That, in and of itself, was a radical act, because even though more than 50% of Brazilians identify as black or mixed race, most politicians, including the current president of Brazil, Michel Temer, and the majority of his cabinet are white men. Franco, on the other hand, was a black, queer, feminist woman from a favela. And she used this to her advantage. She ran a campaign where she championed causes that reflected her life experiences. She defended human rights. She was a fearless advocate for the rights of all Afro-Brazilians, LGBTQ plus people, women, single mothers, and poor communities. She also rallied against police violence in the favelas. Not only did she win, but her issues proved to be very popular. Franco actually received the fifth highest vote total of more than 1,500 candidates running for city council. She was the only black woman to serve on that council, which is made up of 51 seats. As soon as she took office, and with her goals firmly in sight, Franco started working on women's rights and issues affecting favelas. While she was chair of the Women's Defense Commission, she also fought for LGBTQ plus rights and continued to be fearlessly vocal about police brutality. Rio has one of the deadliest police forces in the world, and the victims of that violence are often young black men and women. According to a Brazilian think tank, in 2016, 925 people were killed during police operations, and human rights groups think that number climbed to over 1,000 deaths in 2017. 
This violence is what led President Tamer to declare in February 2018 that he was handing over control of Rio's public security to the military, giving them, quote, vast powers to secure order. That decision marked the first time there's been a federal intervention in a state since the 1980s, when Brazil became a democracy again after 21 years of a military regime. Temer's decision was an extremely controversial one, and Franco strongly disagreed with it. She said a move like this failed to address the root causes of violence in Rio and had the potential to make the situation even worse, empowering military forces to crack down on what they considered disorderly neighborhoods. Franco was then appointed to a commission that would monitor how the federal intervention was going, which was a position that she wouldn't hold for long. While serving on the commission, she continued to bring public attention to police brutality. In a tweet from her account on March 13, 2018, she said, quote, another homicide of a young man that could be credited to the police. Matthias Mello was leaving church when he was killed. How many others will have to die for this war to end? The next day, March 14th, Franco attended an event called Young Black Women Moving Power Structures. Before leaving the event, she told them, we have to occupy every place with our bodies, urging them to continue getting involved and seeking justice. In a cruel twist of fate, it was after leaving this event about empowering black women and raising the voices of the marginalized that Franco was gunned down in her car, along with her driver, Anderson Pedro Gomez. Her press officer, who was in the back seat, suffered injuries but survived. The timing and execution of this attack have raised suspicions about who could be behind it, as it came only one day after Franco sent that tweet blaming police for the death of a young black man. The nature of the assassination also appears to be targeted. The killers were able to pull up next to her car, which had tinted windows, and fire four shots directly at Franco. They fired nine shots total. Local news reports say Franco was killed by people who were tracking her movements, but no one has yet been taken into custody. The police chief has said no motive has been established. Bullets from the crime scene were reportedly traced back to being purchased by the federal police in 2006, though federal authorities are apparently working with local police on the investigation. President Temer said the killing was an affront to the rule of law and an affront to democracy. The president has since used her death as a way of defending his decision to militarize Rio. Amnesty International has called for a full investigation into Franco's death. But it's important to note that Franco's death can't just simply be attributed to violence in Rio. Many believe Marielle Franco was targeted because she was political. They say she died because she was an outspoken black feminist who used her voice to fight for the rights of women, LGBTQ plus people, and the favela residents who have to endure constant violence inflicted by Rio's police force on the community. Now that Franco's voice has been silenced prematurely and tragically, Many thousands of people around the world are making sure that she is not forgotten. There has been an outpouring of support and grief over Franco's murder, with thousands of people, especially black women, marching and mourning in the streets of Brazil. Thousands have rallied outside of Rio's legislature, demanding an independent investigation into her death. So now the world waits to see if the Brazilian government will bring those involved to justice.